Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com where my goal is to equip you with the best techniques and tips to make you a better and more efficient photographer. In this video, we are going to look at external processors from within Lightroom, but first, make sure you check out all of the free resources I have available on my website. I am often asked how I prefer to work between Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm going to press Command or Control comma on my keyboard in order to access the Lightroom preferences. If I decide to take a photo from Lightroom into Photoshop, I'd like it to be the PSD format, sRGB color space, 16 bits, and 300 resolution. But I'm going to point out what I believe to be a flaw in the matrix. Okay, if I right click on this image and I say edit in Photoshop, Obviously, it brings the image into Photoshop in order for me to complete additional edits. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to convert this image to black and white, and I want to do it using my Photoshop action rather than Lightroom. I'm going to go ahead and execute that action. And now I have a black and white, and I'm just going to save it by pressing Command or Control S on the keyboard, then Command W or Control W to close it. Let's jump back to Lightroom. And you'll notice we now have the black and white version alongside of the color version right in Lightroom, which seems really handy. So we have this raw NEF file, and then we have this edit.psd that we converted inside of Photoshop. Here's where the issue comes in. What I'm going to do is right click and just show this in Finder, because what I would like to point out is the file size. This file was exploded to 193.2 megabytes, sitting next to raw files that are sitting around 20 megabytes. That is huge. Now, you might be saying, well, of course it did that because it's a Photoshop document and it has layers. It has one layer, it's a PSD. And that is true, but when we make a black and white conversion and get rid of the color, actually the file size should be smaller. The problem with this is that if you edit several of your photos in Photoshop through Lightroom, you are going to have drives filling in no time at all, and I am not okay with that. So I do not use this connection between Lightroom and Photoshop this way. What I prefer to do is take this original color photo. I've made some corrections inside of Lightroom already. Here's the before and after, or just some slight color adjustments. And I'm actually going to export this photo as a JPEG and then open it inside of Photoshop and convert it to black and white that way. And let me go ahead and do that so you can see the file size difference. Command or Control Shift E in order to export. The image opens inside of Photoshop. I set that in my export dialog box. I'm going to execute that black and white action again, but this time I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. And I always save as a JPEG quality 10 because I've done several tests and studies and the quality of 12 is overkill and increases your file size. So 10 is plenty enough. You can argue that with me later. I'm going to say OK and go ahead and close this. Now I'm going to jump out to Finder and look at the file size. Here is the black and white JPEG versus the Photoshop 2 meg versus 193 meg. Now, I'm no mathematical genius, but something tells me that if I do this to several hundred or even thousands of photos through Lightroom, I'm going to have issues. My preference is to correct all of the photos inside of Lightroom, export them as JPEGs, and then open the ones that I wish to work on further in Photoshop, flatten, save them as JPEGs, and move on. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.